Tess, Tess. South District and um, East Servette. In terms of returning. I have a problem entering question. I have to ask Frank. No, I'll take your notes and microphone. Yes. Okay. We'll so yeah, the, on on <laughs> We're trying to conserve power. That was the only reason why they're off. So it would be better. I just to note it's lovely to see you. Can we do that? Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're not starting yet. You've got about three minutes until we'll get started. This is just your three minute warning. <laughs>
Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. If folks could find a seat or stand or do whatever brings them joy, but settle down up, one of those things. Lydia, did you get your question answered? Okay. Uh-huh. Great. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited that you're here. If you don't know me, my name is Zariah Hightower. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the, thank you, I'm the co-chair. I feel like I'm doing stand-up. I'm like, oh, I got to do a joke. Um, I won't. I'm the co-chair of the Burlington Progressive Party. Last time I tried to do jokes in a political setting, it did not work out well. It was during my campaign. Um, Carter uh, is the other Burlington co-chair. He does all of the work and lets me do all of the fun stuff, like standing up here talking, which is a pretty good deal for me. Um, super excited to have you all. If you don't know where you are, you're at the Burlington Progressive Car Caucus for the March 2023 elections. Yes, very excited. Excited to have you all. Excited to be in person again. Um, excited for all of you that are online. Excited for Deb back there. She made it. Um, and for those of you who don't know, even though I'm sure you all do, um, Progressive Party is a great third party movement in Vermont working for social justice, economic, and environmental justice. And we've got great candidates who want to do that today. So I think a little bit about the process, just in case you don't know, is we're going to take candidate, we're going to take nominations for city council. Um, folks will get you microphones. Um, I think there's going to be somebody on the right on somebody on the left if you would like to make a nomination. Um, you cannot take more than two minutes for a nomination. At a minute and a half, I'll start doing a little dance, and at two minutes, I will just cut you off. Um, and then once you have been nominated, if you would like to accept the nomination, you can just come up here and take a seat in a chair. Um, then when all the nominations have been made, we will close the nominations. Candidates will get a chance to give an introductory speech. Then we will do questions from you all um, for the candidates. In your questions, just keep them brief. Um, we're looking for just a short question. I'll try to potentially reframe it to ask more of the candidates, um, but great. And then we'll work, so we'll start there and then we'll go to some of the other positions that we're nominating for today. Any questions before we start? Does everybody feel good? Great. Then we will open the floor for city council candidate nominations. Okay, Barbara Prine. Check. Check. Well, I'm so happy because I get to nominate my friend, neighbor of 20 years, Milo Grant for city council. We have been standing in the driveway talking about affordable housing, talking about difficulties of poverty in our neighborhood, talking about police and police reform. And Milo is insightful, engaged, hardworking, and bold. And we are so lucky to have her. I'm so grateful that she's putting herself forward. She's been on the police commission, fighting the very hard fight for all of us. And I really hope you'll all join me in supporting her for ward, what for uh, Central District, thank you, Central District City Council. Go Milo. Choked up. Great. Our first candidate, Milo Grant. The, the floor is still open for nominations. Would anybody like to make a nomination? Yes, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Catherine, and this little fella is Rosat. 
He can't vote yet, but he's trying to. <laughs> I'm here to nominate my best friend, Jake Shuman. Um, we're all here today because we need positive people in our office. It's a time to stop, 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 stop. <laughs> yes, please, thank you. <laughs> it's a time to consider the issues that we all care about and decide which candidate to support. I'm here for Jake. I feel that he would take a positive um, position on the issues at hand. He cares about the community and have leadership qualities. He's intelligent, honest, and have the ability to communicate and listen. He cares about the issues you care about. He's been through the same thing you've been through. Never judge a book by its cover. So I'm here to nominate Jake Shuman, City Council. Great, we've got another nomination, Jake Schumann. And if I may, I'd like to make a nomination yeah. myself. Oh, oh yes, you're the fourth floor is open for nominations. <laughs> um, I would like to take the opportunity to nominate Romeo Von Herman um, to uh, represent the Progressive Party running for the Ward 8 race. Um, Romeo and I have only met very recently, but I was very impressed by the energy that he was bringing and the reasons that he um, told me for running. He is a working class person uh, and and he's uh, out there seeing every day the struggles that people are experiencing and trying to help them in the ways that he can and advocate for them in the ways that he can and I think that that is so noble and he's the type of person that we need uh, in the Progressive Party representing us on City Council. Thank you. Amazing. So we've got a Central and East in Ward 8. Would anybody like to nominate another candidate? Yes, please. Nope, we'll get you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for Ward 8 City Council, I would like to nominate uh, Ward 8 uh, district, I would like to nominate Adam Franz. Um, he is someone I have known for some time now, and I can say without a doubt that he's one of the most compassionate people I know. He's the type of person who would um, stop and talk to almost anyone to learn more about them, and he's very passionate about making change and um, doing right and very driven and one of the most intelligent people I know, and I feel like he can bring a lot. And yeah, we would all be better for Adam Franz for War Day. And we've got Adam. The floor is still open for not, is that you? Uh, hi, so um, I want to nominate Roan Allison for Ward 8. I've known uh, Roan for a while. Roan's got uh, pretty solid politics running on a, a platform of, um, you know, worker power, uh, housing for all, that kind of stuff. Adam, I believe, is running for East District, not Ward 8. There might have been a little uh, slip up there in the campaign, yeah. but uh, both of these candidates are really solid, and they're running in uh, overlapping constituencies. I'm excited to see them both. Thank you. Great, thank you, Roan, for joining us. Are there any other candidates for city council? Go ahead. Hi, I'd like to introduce my dear friend, Fareed Munarsha, who is running for South District City Council. <laughs> we love Fareed. Um, he is a tireless proponent for making Burlington a livable city, as we have seen through his extensive work through his mutual aid group, The People's Kitchen. He feeds those in need, as well as those supporting causes at protests and community events. It is absolutely true that the revolution has run on this food for many years. He is a supporter of Proposition Zero, also the initiative to form an oversight board called Community Control of Police. I am absolutely confident that these important battle items will come into fruition if he is elected. 
And we've got Fareed for South District slash mayor joining us. We've got one more seat, so I assume <laughs> I assume we've got one more candidate out there, one more nomination, maybe not. Is there just an extra seat? Last call for nominate. There we go. <laughs> uh, I want to nominate Will. Uh, I've only met him a couple of times, but I've been very impressed each time more impressed every time that I've met him. Uh, solid politics and he really cares. Um, policy buff, that is for sure. So I'm nominating Will. Oh, sorry, uh, South, South District. <laughs> Will, what is your last name? Will Anderson. Um, Will Anderson for South District. Uh, are there any last nominations? Final call for city council nominations. Great. Then, this time I actually will time. I didn't time anyone, but this time I will. So I will start with you, Milo, and you will just get the mic and pass it down. You've got three minutes. Um, to introduce yourself to all of us, especially for those of us who don't know you. And thank you so much, all of you, for being up here with us and being willing to want the progressive endorsement. Go ahead, Milo. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, briefly, born and raised in New York City. I came up to Burlington fall of 84 and attended the University of Vermont. And then after graduating, uh, somehow managed to stay. I think it was my love for music, DJing, get involved a lot with people in the arts community here, um, creating a safe space for myself. So uh, pretty much living here, having a good time, and then uh, the Millie Brothers incident, that use of force case, which is still dragging on, really woke me up to the fact that uh, Burlington talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. I was on the special committee for policing policies. I then um, put an application for the police commission and it's, it's been very, very tough. Um, and I feel that this is just the next step. I would like to answer a question that I received in a pretty aggressive email, but hey, I put myself in this, so I'm ready for it. The question is, should residents expect a solution to affordable housing, addiction, and mental health illness before, before, capitalized, expecting accountability of those who violate universal laws against stealing, robbing, violence, and more? Well, isn't that the question of our time? Isn't that the big argument that is splitting this city apart? And the answer is an either or is a toxic solution. It's not a realistic solution. We can arrest drug dealers all day, every day. We're not, but we could. But if we're not addressing addiction, what does that latter part matter? So it is the support of the continuing concept of a variety of resources in place, mutual aid, proper systems within the city at all levels, um, addressing issues of livability, which are also important to me. That includes affordable housing, that includes um, how we interact with our neighbors, that includes what type of arts and entertainment are available to our, our neighbors. It includes different areas of the economy. Um, a downtown business is important, but we need to support the businesses that are in our district as well. So I think I might be out of time. I'll be respectful of that. I, wanna th <laughs> I uh, want to say um, that it's gonna be really important for people to come out and vote in March. Our district historically, we don't vote. We don't vote, which is why we don't get respect on our name. And that's something we really need to be thinking about. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Uh, thanks so much. My name is Jake Schumann. I'm very happy to be up on this stage with several friends of mine and you know, maybe some new friends. We'll see, we'll see how things go. Um, it hasn't been long since uh, I've been at a progressive caucus seeking a nomination. Uh, only three months, less than 100 days. Um, and I think that the last time around, a lot of friendships did come out of it. Um, and, you know, I want to respect the fact that there were some instances too where, uh, you know, folks might have felt like uh, what I said or what I did might have been uh, not so great, right? Um, running as an independent against a progressive, and now I'm, I'm saying, I, I am a progressive and I am part of this party. Um, you know, I want to recognize that there's a lot of learning that happens in the course of a campaign um, and afterwards. Uh, there's a lot of um, feedback that's received and I think that, I, I hope that folks can trust that I did learn from that last experience um, and I have grown as a result. Um, and so I guess, you know, what I really wanted to focus my comments on tonight was when we have the best of intentions, we can still cause harm. Um, but as individuals, we can stop and we can check in and we can seek to make things right. We can try to learn and grow and develop before we move on. And so my question that I would pose is why, can, why can't our institutions do the same thing, right? Like, why can't our institutions that are made of individuals, when they cause harm, why can't they admit to having done so? Why, why do they struggle to heal the hurt before um, moving on and developing? Um, so I think that's kind of the um, mentality and the mindset that I seek to bring to city council um, as we seek to uh, rebuild our public safety infrastructure is, is kind of trying to create a culture of safety where we can safely say, yeah, we've messed up we've caused harm and that's okay. That's not, an, that's not us admitting to being bad. That's how we begin to be better. Thanks. And just, and just to check in, that was Milo for Central, Jake for East. And now we've got Romeo for Eight. Thank you everybody for having me. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank everyone for having me here today. Indeed, it's an honor and a privilege to run for Office of Public Trust and represent the voices and aspirations, concerns, and resolutions of Ward 8 residents at the City Hall as a future city councilor of Burlington, Vermont. My journey to this point is no accident. Born and raised in Mogadishu, Somalia, being first generation migrant here in America, I have seen the importance of public service as well as good governance and the opposite. Case in point, when elected members of our community to office of public trust, key issues are addressed. And the overall quality of life of the city and its residents improves. When the issues are not addressed, the opposite happens. And as you can tell, Burlington, a lot is going on out here. And it's, Burlington is a very capable city. It just needs the right folks to be at the right place. On that note, folks, I seek your vote today for Ward 8 City Councilor because as a resident and as an individual that works at Green Mountain Transit, who is pro-robust public transit system here in Burlington, and who is the liaison secretary for our Committee for Justice, Equity, and Diversity, I am also equally for promoting diversity here in the city at every level of governance. That being said, some of my key issues are not limited to just public safety, homelessness, substance abuse, climate change, rising living costs, as you're aware, that's going on here in the city. It's incredibly very expensive to live in, but it's something that we can find a way to resolve it. One of the key things that I am really proud of, that I really want to push in this city, is to build the trust between the community and the judiciary system. These communities include the BIPOC community, the immigrants, the LGTB community, and other minor, minority communities right here in the city of Burlington. My method of resolving issues aforementioned here today will be through compassionate means, but yet 
remain resolved in resolving them. I'm open to working with everybody, including all city council members, the mayor's office, the judiciary, including law enforcement, and members of the community to achieving tangible results in this city. I plan to work with everybody and everybody. I welcome your questions, suggestions, and ideas to further elaborate my plans, my priorities in this city as your future city councilor and as the uh, station manager and supervisor here in downtown transit center. So you can always find me there. I'm happy to help you board the right bus to go where you guys need to go. And uh, even as a future city councilor, I'll still help you out whenever you guys need me, no matter what. I thank you for giving me the time to be here. I'm very blessed to be here. I'm very proud to be in Burlington, here in Vermont. And I can't wait to work with everybody, both at the transit center, on the bus, at the council, at the city hall, everywhere. So don't be shy, come and say hello, and I'll be happy to help, thank you. And next up, we've got Adam for East District. Hey, thank you very much. I grew up in Vermont. I've lived in Vermont my entire life. I've been very inspired watching the Progressive Party of Burlington and of Vermont, inspired by the Alley House and Zariah's race last year. Um, coming to the Progressive uh, Summit in the summer, learned about all the history of the Progressive Party, go, dating back to Bernie Sanders' uh, mayorship. Very inspired by that. Um, as a union member uh, with the Vermont Starbucks Workers United, uh, I understand the value of organized labor, and I understand the value of organized labor and workers all over um, having a strong connection to political and electoral movements like the Progressive Party. So I've made workers' empowerment, workers' power a priority in my campaign. I have a, an entire plank on the platform labeled workers' power. It lists priorities such as eliminating forced arbitration, raising the minimum wage, and good union jobs for all municipal employees alongside uh, good union contracts. I, I believe that you know we can bring this to the council um, with this platform and bring my experience as a union barista um, with me, bring my platform with me. This experience and this platform is what got me the endorsement for uh, Teamsters Local 597, which covers the Green Mountain Transit and UPS and workers all across the state of Vermont. Um, I have a pretty strong vision for what we can do in this city, and I, I hope you and all uh, can support me in that. I also have a plan for strengthening the democratic infrastructure of this city. I very much appreciate as elections inspector that this city makes it, or the state makes it easy to vote for all students and for all residents and workers of this state. Um, but our democratic infrastructure is not sufficient at the moment. So I support common sense, worker-friendly proposals like the uh, voting rights proposals that have been put on the ballot for this year. I also support other reforms that would make workers' democracy um, more feasible, such as um, Proposition Zero, which was put up by my friend over here. Yeah. I... <laughs> And I know a lot of people in the progressives have worked very hard on that, and it's really wonderful to see what we can do as a city. So I hope that you all that are living in the district will support me and will support my friend Roan Allison here on the Champs of Socialism slate um, for city council. Thank you very much. Next up, we've got Roan for Ward 8. Uh, thank you, Adam, and thank you, Zarai. Uh, my name is Roan. Uh, I'm a student at UVM, uh, third year, uh, economics and history. Uh, I moved out here from San Diego, California, and I was hoping to escape the atrocious state of uh, housing and climate there, only to find the exact same problems here. <laughs> Who here rents? I I'm pretty sure a good percentage of you rent, and I'm pretty sure all of you have noticed how the uh, prices of your rent have skyrocketed recently. And there is a reason for that. I mean, inflation, all of that. But it's also because uh, the school is pumping in more and more students and filling up demand without uh, providing any housing uh, in the city of Burlington. Uh, hopefully, as a city councilor, I can help curb that uh, through aggressive uh, 
pro-housing supply policies. Uh, public housing uh, takes some of the uh, older unused buildings and retrofit them into public housing. Additionally, uh, I'd like to propose a ban on Airbnbs within the city limits of Burlington. Those units could be used for people to live in them, not for random strangers to come hang out in them. That's what a hotel is for. Uh, but I don't only run on housing, although it is a significantly important point to my policy proposals. I'm also a large fan of, in of uh, fixing our city's infrastructure even further. Uh, just like Adam, I've been endorsed by the Teamsters. Um, and with that endorsement, I would like to uh, push for more buses uh, here in the city. And not only that, shovel out the buses to make it accessible for people who have uh, limited mobility. Um, I'd like to advocate for a municipal bike share because all the, uh, those bike companies that had uh, their startups failed here. And I think that having access to uh, public bikes would be very useful for us. On top of that, um, I'm for uh, decriminalizing drugs in the city. Uh, don't know how exactly feasible that is, but we can push for it. Uh, I really would like to increase the public safety apparatus, really pushing for the uh, civilian oversight of police. And um, yeah, I really hope you guys could uh, vote for me. I've been canvassing um, pretty much nonstop in every election that uh, there's been since I pretty much got here. Uh, canvassed for Alley House, canvassed uh, for Kate Logan, who just got in the State House, uh, Tanya Vyhovsky, worked with VPIRG over the summer, got a lot of practice talking with voters and convincing them, and I'd like to represent the students of my school in city council and push for a uh, better city. Thank you. Next up, we've got Fareed for South District. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Burlington, by and large, uh, we care. We care about our community. We care about uh, each other. We care about the environment. We care about the world. And we care about our values. And we make sure that our values are reflected in our public institutions. Um, I, I was born on the other side of the world. and. I uh, feel blessed that I found this place in 1995 and have proudly called Burlington home since then. Um, and it is also special because uh, it has a proud history of uh, progressive politics um, as well as creative, out-of-the-box thinking um, to, to the courage to, ha to carry out uh, our conviction. It truly really is a special place, but obviously we have issues. I've got issues. We, we, we as a community have issues. Um, we are facing multiple crisis situation. Uh, the pandemic has made the existing environmental crisis and uh, uh, a, a crisis, the economic crisis of in inequity, uh, much worse. And our public institutions have been stretched to almost its breaking limit. And uh, I wanna thank you all for uh, your support in uh, uh, the Proposition Zero project. We made it. So thank you, you all, and we'll, we'll, it'll be on the ballot this March. And it's, it's important because it's the first step to reclaim the power of the public. Uh, as a member of the public, I am concerned with the direction uh, of our public institution uh, and also the corruption in our public processes. I think people should have the right to participate fully in decisions that impact their lives, and those who are impacted most directly should have a more direct say. And that's what the Proposition Zero is about. That's uh, why we need to be able to use our voice and to use our numbers to counter the effect of privatization that has uh, occurred in our city. And when I'm talking about privatization, not just selling Burlington Telecom, although that was really bad, but also possibly uh, selling uh, Memorial Auditorium, uh, making Church Street a pay-to-play area, uh, and most importantly is cutting off the access of the public to our public processes. We can't 
we can't afford that. Not with like what's going on, not with, not with the crisis that we're facing. We need to reclaim our power uh, and we need to reassert our control of our public assets, our public resources, and of our public processes. So please uh, help me uh, vote yes on uh, for the uh, Proposition Zero ballot questions as well as the police uh, oversight. Thank you. And last but certainly not le least, we've got Will for South District. Uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you to all the uh, candidates who spoke before me with some uh, really inspirational <laughs> words, I have to say. I know a lot of you don't know me, uh, but those that do, probably the first thing you think of is that I am a huge nerd uh, about a lot of things. Uh, but especially, what I really especially love is economic policy, uh, which I know sounds pretty boring, but to me, I see public policy as a tool that can achieve not only economic justice, but social justice and environmental justice as well. Uh, and these values are just really deeply ingrained in, in who I am. Uh, you know, to introduce myself, I would say, I believe in a very broad slate of human rights and personal freedoms, and that all people should have the same opportunities that I've had, uh, which I consider to be a great privilege. When I look at the city of Burlington from an economic perspective, I see a crisis, a growing crisis of affordability. Tenants are paying more in rent each year. Uh, something like, I think it's 60% of Burlington tenants are paying half of their income or more in rent. Uh, compared to peer cities across Vermont, across New England, across the United States, this is abnormally high. Uh, when you look at single family home prices, these are shooting up as well. Obviously, this is much more difficult to impact with municipal policy, but we shouldn't neglect the fact uh, that it's much harder for, for young families in Vermont to purchase a home. Now, on the issue of property tax, after the most recent appraisal, uh, almost every single family homeowner is facing a higher property tax rate. For those on a fixed income or low income, this is an outsized uh, economic burden uh, on their lives. And I think that's extremely unfair. Uh, so should I be nominated, I, I'm going to make a campaign around some very specific and substantive policy proposals that I think are long overdue in the city of Burlington. Starting with rent stabilization. Rent should be stabilized at a given percentage, a low percentage, between probably between zero and 3%, along with the median consumer price index. Landlords should not be allowed to be raising rents uh, with impunity. And we do know that al although the city was able to pass just cause eviction, it was vetoed by the governor. So we definitely need to, to secure that as well. But rent stabilization, I see as the key to keeping uh, tenants uh, in a more stable economic situation. Along with that, a property tax reform. I see this as particularly appealing in the South District, where there's a lot of single family homeowners in owner occupied uh, houses, you know, people that own their own homes, uh, but often are facing low uh, inflated or fixed incomes uh, you know, in retirement. Uh, I'm going to propose property tax reforms that shift the burden of the property tax to those that own multifamily properties. Uh, essentially, what I'm going to suggest is that uh, anyone who lives in their own home is not going to face increased property taxes uh, from uh, the school bond vote that we passed uh, last. So I'd just like to say, uh, I hope you can support these proposals and my idea to get them out there. Uh, Fareed also, I think, is a great choice, and should I be nominated, I'll definitely be looking to him for support uh, on racial justice, on policing, and hope to work together with him in the future, as with all the other candidates and all of you. Thank you. Thank you, and another round of applause for a whole slate of candidates. I'm so incredibly, I mean, this is really about movement building and I just want us to remember that we have more in common with every single person in, that is in this room than a whole history of people who have been in power in the past. And so I'm just really, really grateful for the movement building that we're building right now and how many of you there are on the stage. And with that sentiment, we will turn to questions from the audience. I, believe that there is mics running around. Oh, whoa, was that a, what? 
Okay. Okay, we're gonna um, go to questions. Again, keep your questions short, brief, kind, loving, kind-hearted, all of those things. Um, and you can direct them to a candidate. I'll try to give, we have two races that are um, contended, and so I'll try to give the other person the same amount of time to speak or answer. To Yes, to the same amount of time to answer. Carter, did you want me to go to you first, or did you want to? Sure. Sorry, he gets, he does a lot of work. He gets first dibs. I'm being selfish. Um, so my question's for all the candidates and just pretty quick informational one. How are you going to identify on the ballot? Because for me, it's really important if the party is getting behind a candidate that they're helping build that shared infrastructure, that uh, data and all the other things that help us keep this movement alive long-term. Um, and then if you do not win the caucus, are you going to be running against the progressive nominate, uh, nominee? Okay, so we're going to start with Will and go down the line. Just super quick, um, which just such a Carter question. Super quick, are you running? What will you be on the ballot? And would you run anyway if you did not get the endorsement? Uh, I would certainly run as a progressive. I think this party is the best thing ever. Uh, and if not nominated, not only will I not run, but I'll try to support uh, the uh, nominee in their race as best I can. Um, I'm running as independent, um, and uh, I think um, that's, uh, I would be lying if I said like I would be identifying with the party, uh, and also the South District, I, I feel like it's, that's also the, the best way to, uh, to reach people. Thanks. I am running as a progressive, and if I lose, I will be throwing my support behind Romeo. Um, I will be running with the progressive name in the ballot. I've not made a decision about, you know, otherwise. I think the most important thing is that the Democrat does not win re-election. I will be running as a progressive no matter what happens, and... Uh, if uh, Ron is chosen, I will be more than happy to support Ron. Uh, I was very naive last time around. Um, I am not an independent. I am a progressive. So if I receive the progressive nomination, I will be a progressive on the ballot. If I do not receive the nomination, I will not run. Um, and I'm really excited about Proposition Zero. So I will be putting a lot of time into that. And I will be proud to be running as a progressive. Great. So we will start with Earhart, and then we will go to this lovely person in black, and then we will go to Brian, and then we will go to Jack. Uh, I'm going to start writing that down. Th thanks, Soraya. And uh, yeah, in the name of movement building, this is kind of a similar question to Carter's. Um, so our bylaws, our progressive party bylaws, encourage uh, caucus goers, uh, all of us, uh, to base our endorsement decisions on several criteria. So my question for each of the candidates uh, is, um, do you uh, endorse uh, the Vermont Progressive Party Statement of Principles? Um, do you commit uh, not to work in opposition to any provision in the Progressive Party platform? Um, do you commit not to work against progressive party endorsed candidates? And do you commit um, to caucus regularly with other progressive elected officials? I think all the candidates got this initially when uh, they spoke to Carter uh, around uh, uh, asking for the endorsement. So it's kind of a yes or no question. Just love to hear from everybody on that. And Thank can you. you just say the four things again in very yeah. brief? Yeah. Um, so affirmative endorsement of the progressive party statement of principles. Uh, commitment not to work uh, against any provision in the Progressive Party platform. Commitment not to work against any progress against a Progressive Party endorsed candidate, and a commitment to caucus regularly with other Progressive electeds. So principles, platform, candidates, caucus. Yes. Nice. Yes. Yes. And yes. <laughs> I've read them recently so that I can also say yes, 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 and yes. I'm gonna simplify to just four yeses. Uh, the first two, yes. Not sure about the third one. The last one, absolutely yes. Uh, I don't know, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, 
uh, yes, thanks to ranked choice voting, and yes. And I'll also say yes to all four provisions. Thanks, guys. I will give you mine. If I need one. Hi, I'm Margaret Joyle. I uh, live in Ward 5, where I have lived since I moved to Burlington um, in 1985. I've been a member of the Progressive Party. I'm probably not presently because I haven't paid dues. I certainly uh, support the Progressive Vermont Progressive, uh, Progressive Party. My question to Fareed and to Will is uh, the elephant in the room who's not here, uh, but is Joan Shannon and the Democratic Party. And uh, I understand why Fareed would choose to run as an independent, because we have never, never, never won in Ward 5, never. And we now have somebody who's been there for a really long time. All right, okay, okay, you're right, you're right. I stand corrected one time, one time. I've worked on many campaigns, you're right. Anyway, my point is we don't win. We don't usually win. Barb and, and Jean, I bet you can agree with me about that. Usually, we don't win. And, and so my question to you is what are you gonna do about it? Fair enough. What are you going to do about Joan Shannon? And I really like elephants. So I'm going to say Joan Shannon is not the elephant in the room. Um, but we'll start with Will and go to Fareed. Sure. So, uh, you know, obviously, uh, based on previous election results, uh, based on the situation in general, a tough campaign. My strategy will be to present a better platform than hers. Make the people of Ward 5 and Ward 6 an offer that they just can't turn down. So we're talking rent stabilization, property tax reform, better urban density, uh, you know, a, a great plan to make the police better, not racist, not brutal. Uh, and I'm going to present that in a way that uh, is better than Joan Shannon's, you know, very tepid platform. That's my strategy. Make a better offer to the voters of the South District. Um, I have several victory conditions. First one is if the ballot items pass, uh, that's the, the main priority for me, is to set up an alternative way so that we could propose uh, ordinances and we could pass them through majority rule. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, uh, pro partners and a lot of uh, proposals that are popular but never would be presented to the voters because the city council has full control over what gets on the ballot. So uh, I think if like if we get there, I think it would be a, a, a win for me and it would be a win for Burlington. And as far as Joan Shannon, we hopefully uh, we'll, we'll have, we'll pro that will provide a counter check and provide some balance to the decisions that she's part of. Um. Great, thank you both. Um, we've got Brian next, and then Brian, you're gonna hand your mic to Jack. Who wants to get in the queue after Jack? Okay, we've got green shirt, blue shirt, brown jacket. And we'll go after that. So I have a, uh, a question that's geared towards two candidates, but everyone's welcome to weigh in. Um, I recently ended my affiliation with the Champlain Valley DSA um, due to harm caused to myself and others that was perpetuated by Adam France and his campaign manager, Trey Cook, who's sitting over there. Um, and uh, there was a statement made in the electoral working group and Adam and Trey were part of this discussion in which they said, approximate quote, although contingents of democratic social, socialism exist in the progressive party, their control is not absolute. And when I asked them, what do they mean by that? They never answered, but I have experienced autocratic behavior prevail over democratic behavior as myself and many others have been driven out so my question is, if that's how you acted in the past, how can we trust you're gonna be any different when you have real political power? And how will all of you stand up for democracy when faced with the forces of autocracy um, pressuring you? And sorry, can you, those are two starting with Adam and then to the general. Okay, we'll start with you, Adam. Will? Yeah. I want to start by saying that I, I do respect Brian a lot. Brian was the um, 
harassment and grievance officer for Champlain Valley GSA for a long time uh, before I began. And you know, in his absence, we have not been able to fill the position because it's a hard job and nobody wants to take up the grueling position. Um, you know, CVDSA is a very democratic organization. Um, I came to it after it had been pretty defunct um, due to COVID-19 um, and came into it. Um, you know, we were in a difficult space when it came into, you know, into 2022, um, but I'm proud of how it, uh, of what it's done in the meantime. Sorry, that's kind of distracting. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we, we do try really hard to make CVDSA a democratic organization, and I know democracy is not always fun for everybody involved. You know, I know that the progressives try to be a democratic organization. Um, my union is a democratic organization, and CVDSA is as well. Uh, I know for my union, we, we take votes a lot of the time that I, I don't agree with, um, but, you know, I, I do accept, you know, what happens. I, I don't recall any conversation like what Brian is talking about. I, you know, have a, a lot of respect for the Progressive Party, um, which is why I'm here today, and I want to be running with the Progressive Party. Um, I think it's a broad tent, and that's where it's at its strongest. So you have people that identify as democratic socialists, um, and you have people that, that don't, and I think that's a great thing. Um, there's room for all of us in this party. And I, I think when we, when we get to the council, you know, hopefully there will be at least six of us there that will have to get along and work together to create a bur better Burlington, regardless of, you know, how we might decide to politically identify, because we do have, as I said, more in common together than we do with um, people that, you know, have come before us. Great. And if, oh, so we'll have one more person. Go ahead. Did you want, you wanted to go, right? Uh, sure. I, I just wanted to make a quick point of affirmation to the question asked. Uh, you're right in the sense that uh, when folks are being uh, nominated, of course, a lot of folks do make a lot of promises out there. And obviously, it's different than once the person comes to power, or at least once the person is off, you know, they're in office of public trust, so to speak. Um, what I can do, I can speak for myself, is give you my affirmation that I, I always believe in and stand for that democracy, direct democracy, delivers for its people irrespective of where you come from. And uh, I, I wanna say personally that it's regrettable what happened to you and that, uh, that it can be resolved in an amicable manner through discussion to uh, the folks that are involved in the statement that you just made. And as your future city councilor, upon hopefully chosen for that matter, that I will make sure that I work with everybody, including you in coming with resolutions. You can be with any party, you can be with the Progressive Party, but at the end of the day, what is important is that we, we should be there to work with you as an individual, as collective citizens, as collective residents, in coming up with resolutions in what you are facing. And as a Progressive Party member, I'm more than happy to listen to you, your concerns, and even when I'm not in office, I'm happy to still listen to you, to your concerns, no matter what. Great, thank you both. We will go to Jack. Hello, there we go. Uh, this is for those running in the South District. So just about everybody here has talked about how housing is such a big issue. It's very important how there's a lack of affordability and just a lack of housing overall. So what are some specific solutions that you have when it comes to zoning, um, for example? because I can think of a couple of things off the top of my head in the South District. Um, and I was wondering your thoughts on that. Well, let's start with Farid this time. Did we do Will first last time? Yeah. yeah. Um, housing should be a human right. It is a human right. We all need it. Uh, I don't know when governments stop building public housing but that is like I'm willing to put everything on the table as far as like solving this housing crisis because it, it does underline all these other symptoms uh, that we are seeing. Um, so it, it, it should be our main priority to make sure the housing first approach 
uh, regardless of where people are, that we support that because when you don't have stable housing, you don't have a place to go to, then there's no way you can like hold a stable job or like deal with your addiction uh, or or move forward. So I think there are many proposals like that that's been uh, put forward, and I I I I would love to uh, listen to some of uh, the ideas that you have, um, but I. Everything is on the table, uh, from you know rezoning to uh, additional uh, ADUs, uh, also to uh, the government, like city government, actually just building uh, single residency occupants, single resident occupancy units, uh, and taking over even some of the unused like building in the city and uh, re rebuild them as housing units. Yeah, I I, I really support. Uh, pretty much everything that Farid said, but maybe to build on it a little bit. Um, in the South End, I think that we're presented with with quite a conundrum because a lot of people there that I've talked to uh, are infected with this nimbyism, you know, this desire uh, to keep affordable housing and especially to keep, you know, tall buildings uh, out of their neighborhoods. Uh, without trying to get into their motivation too much, um, I do think that there's solutions to this issue. Uh, number one would be making zoning more inclusionary. Uh, so make it make it easier for, for people to build ADUs, uh, to build uh, their buildings up in order to increase density. And, uh, you know, we could offer incentives as well to these landlords uh, to try to build more units on them to make them affordable. Um, I'd also like to mention an idea, uh, you know, called social housing, uh, which is a bit of a different dimension on the concept of public housing. Public housing uh, is a difficult economic problem because when you're not asking people to pay a lot in rent, uh, it results in you not having a lot of resources to maintain the housing stock. You have to pour a lot of public resources into it. But in a social housing scenario, you're trying to get your public housing to reflect the entire society, not just the people that have the, you know, a, a struggle to afford housing. So if you have people across an entire economic spectrum, the higher rents can subsidize the lower ones. So to that effect, uh, I would support a policy similar to what Farid was suggesting in buying uh, older buildings. I think the city of Burlington should be purchasing a lot of buildings, should developing a housing trust to purchase these buildings and then rent them out at all different rates, using the higher rents to subsidize the lower ones, overall increasing our stock of affordable housing. Uh, really, I think, that, I think the problem is that we have landlords that are using rampant speculation and charging rents that are too high. I mean, it's really no surprise to me since they control the Democratic Party here, but uh, I'd really like to make a difference in that regard. Thank you both. We will go to Wyatt and then to Blue Shirt. <laughs> uh, real quick, sort of across the country, a lot of university towns have been facing the exact same issue of student populations leaking into the rest of the housing market, as well as the student populations themselves being packed like sardines in a can. Um, some one solution that's been proposed, which is particularly interesting to me, uh, is an admitted student cap uh, moving forwards as part of your housing solutions. Just real quick for the contested candidates, the contested races here, would you support a student cap on the amount of students admitted to UVM to try and fix the housing supply issue? So I'm still just gonna let us go down the line. We'll start in the middle just for funsies with Roan. Um, and if you're not contested, maybe just keep it a one word answer. <laughs> Can, oh, there we go. Uh, yes, absolutely support a um, admitted students cap. Um, it's not even good for the students who show up um, within the ward. Like you constantly hear about the declining quality of services at the school, and then they get out of the school and they start filling up the community more and more of more people who need to be housed, and that pushes out. Uh, residents who are long term here. So an admitted students cap um, is absolutely uh, necessary as part of the um, solution to the housing crisis here. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. I also support an admitted student uh, cap. I would like to see um, the university not accept any more students next year than it did this year because every year it accepts more and more students than the year before without building any more housing. Um, and yeah, I think that's gonna be a really popular policy with the students too. As a student, I um, would like to see it in Rhone as well. So 
I think the students can see that there's a problem and that's the way to fix it, or one of the ways. Yes, yeah, so um, I agree with the both points and I concur with the statement just made. I think it's important to uh, think of quality of life at uh, the school. Anything that hinders uh, the quality of life of the students needs to be reviewed and corrected Im with immediate effect, including with the uh, statement just made. So as future city councilor, that is something that I will definitely put to the table and work closely with the student body as well as the staff at UVM and uh, as well as any other colleges that are within our city limits as, as, uh, as a point of order. And so, yes, I am for that as well. Uh, it's a sound bite that I can subscribe to, yeah. Um, I will say, though, that it's a little more complex than that. Um, to start, um, I don't think that the city of Burlington has that authority. Um, so it's something that we would have to work with our state house delegation on. Um, but I, I would also say that it should be more dynamic than that, because if you have a hard cap, then what's to say that um, that's, that's not going to fall disproportionately on the amount of in-state or low-income admissions, right? Like if the university is admitting more students because they need more money and we put in a cap, then they might just cut off how many folks are coming in who are getting a sub significant financial assistance. So yes, I do, I do feel like it is important to ensure that um, the admissions do not exceed um, our housing capacity and our quality of life capacity. But I just want to um, make sure folks are aware that, um, that I, I am, am thinking about all of those uh, side effects that might happen and, and, and thinking about those how to mitigate those. Um, I'm absolutely for a cap. I think it's been a very serious problem for several years now where they're like, look, we are building, and then they admit far more people. I don't think the University of Vermont really understands what's happening in our community with the struggle to meet rents, and there's also an issue where we have to have a balance. So we're kind of out of balance with our student population versus the fact that we need homes to bring in, um, say, more nurses or more person people to take jobs and to build the economy in the area. So I think it has to go back to making these agreements with uh, UVM. And I think also we need to be looking at the pilot fund, the payment in lieu of tax situation, because come on, they get off so easy. We really need them to contribute more to this community. I respect how important they are. I'm an alumni. I know that their, their presence is important to the community in terms of education, in terms of employment, but they need to really recognize um, what's going on off of campus. And if we can be honest, they are not packing up and leaving and going anywhere. We can force certain com conversations. We can, we can ask them to have the hard conversations. Thank you. One second. We should totally leverage that pilot funds and like the tax breaks that we give UVM to the tune of over $600 million. And if they're going to use Burlington as the backdrop for their marketing campaign, they need to step up and actually play a, a more active role and to negotiate with us. We've given them so much. Uh, as far as like the student cap, I'd have to see how it's designed. Um, if it's like out of state students or like out of state students above certain income, I could definitely support that. But I think we, we should be asking for a lot more from UPM. They need to play a lot bigger role. Yeah, again, I, I think it's a really difficult issue uh, because on one hand, we have no choice. Uh, we have to cap the student population because they're really starting to push people uh, out of town. Uh, but on the other hand, as it was mentioned uh, by a couple of other candidates, uh, our authority to do that as a city council is probably dubious at best. Um, I like the uh, idea of uh, putting tax pressure. Uh, I like that idea a lot. I mean, uh, if they're going to be putting this outsized pressure on our city, uh, we should be, you know, uh, reaping some benefits from that as well. Uh, 
I really think, though, that uh, the change would have to come from inside UVM. Like, as was said, uh, you know, their culture is, is very different from ours in the way that they're operating. Seems to me the best solution would then for, for them to be to expand beyond Burlington uh, to, you know, other towns in Vermont that are suffering, um, you know, especially given the level of technology we have today. Uh, it, it seems difficult to imagine they can be bringing this many more students into an area already struggling with zoning and housing in this way. So I'd like to find a solution. If a cap is feasible, absolutely. Great, thank you everyone. So we are slowly running out of time. So we had two more people in the queue. After that, we might just take three minutes and you can run up to your candidates and ask them some questions so that we're not all, all listening to all of the questions. But next question is, and I'm so sorry, I keep calling you blue shirt. Uh, the blue it's shirt. Kat. <laughs> Kat. Vote for Jake Shump. Um, <laughs> How do you plan to involve residents in a decision-making process in our town? And that is a question to all of To all. Great. So we will this time start with Adam. <laughs> no, we'll start with you. Sorry, and then we'll go down the line. I'm just changing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Kat. That, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, we need to make meaningful participation uh, a part of our decision-making process. And in order to do that, that's like, that's really a, a tall order because not most people are not gonna pay attention. They're not gonna have enough time to look at the city council meeting uh, or to follow like the process. So we need like, before we could get there, we need to make sure like that people have livable jobs they have uh, secure housing they can uh, they have nutritious food to feed their family and they have child care before um, as we are like we're also uh, increasing participation I do uh, see a lot of hope in uh, if the proposition zero pass uh, because that lowers the barrier for people to have a direct say uh, in our public uh, policy making process It's a rather tough question, specifically in Ward 8, because a lot of them are students and by nature are not exactly engaged. But, um, I mean, they're outliers, of course. Um, personally, I will be involving myself in uh, DSA, in the YDSA, along with the young progressives on campus, um, along with some of the other clubs. Uh, I will have a public Snapchat that the students can <laughs> message me on and ask me questions. I will um, engage on various levels of social media and also um, offer pseudo town halls uh, every now and then. Uh, generally, I will uh, ask students uh, and residents within Ward 8 what they would like to see happen uh, to pull them into the decision-making process. Similar to Roan, um, I'm pretty easy to find. I'm an officer of Champlain Valley uh, DSA of the Young Democratic Socialists of America for University of Vermont and for the uh, UVM progressives, um, all three of those. Those are easy places to find me. Um, students can find me, obviously, on those student clubs, um, but non-students can also find me very easily at meetings for CVDSA. Uh, I'm not hard to find, you know, I'm a student, I'm doing things just like other, every other student. Um, you know, I'm always going to be somebody that people can approach with a question or concern. Um, and, you know, my email is always open. I'm also welcome, you know, citizen participation in our uh, city council. I know that some city councils in the past have had concerns with raucous participation in our public comment, but I don't have a problem with that. I think that any sort of public participation in our city government is desirable. So I, I, I welcome anybody voicing their opinion in any of those spaces that I've talked about. Yes, so I'm gonna use every available platform, including in-person meetings with uh, the ward members. And I think the thing about being a city councilor is not that you only represent your ward, but you represent the interests of the entire resident that live in that city. So I will use every avenue available to me to meet as many residents living in the city to invite them and maybe have a day with a you know, city councilor at the park and just 
you know, kind of give them a little bit of brief of what's happening at the, you know, at the city hall and then tell them to come over and have them hear what's being said and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I'm going to use as many platforms as possible to reach out to everybody and trying to get the message across and uh, create more public participation. Um, there is a project that I've been thinking for quite a while called the Young Adult Social and Political Ingra Integration Project, which I think would be a very useful project in getting City Hall message across to, because we get this city, a lot of young adults that live out here. That's not to say I'm not gonna reach out to um, the other younger folks as well, but certainly that is something that I've been thinking for quite a while. And I think that's, that's something I will consider in implementing uh, at City Hall along with what I'll be doing in the near future. Um, I think there are a lot of things. We can start by supporting and passing Proposition Zero, um, a community oversight board for police and all resident voting on town meeting day. Um, we can also empower our NPAs more. We can provide childcare um, at those NPAs. We can ensure that people um, don't have to work too many hours so that they have the time and energy to participate. Um, we can pay our city councilors uh, more than a stipend. We can actually pay them a wage um, just to start. Um, we can have more city councilors and not less. That way, you know, folks have the bandwidth and the energy to actually um, uh, engage with their um, electorate. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things that we can do. Um, we can make these processes as friendly and as incorporating um, as, we, as, we have, as we can. Um, but at the end of the day, um, that's kind of what it comes down to, right, is, is the, the relational aspect. Um, we can work really hard to make sure that we build those relationships with each other um, and make sure that um, the party is as unified and cohesive as possible, recognizing that it is a our diversity of opinions and perspectives and strategies that make us so amazing. But we are not the party of the status quo. We are the party of the liberation. And let's all come together under that umbrella and work together to make some real change. So one of the things that um, I have been talking about over and over and over again, ad nauseum, uh, driving the chief of police, driving the mayor crazy, is the lack of community engagement around public safety. So community engagement and involving uh, the community in politics, in decisions that will be affecting their lives, is going to be really important to me. I frequently attend these Wednesday morning coffees that the mayor has, and he always has them in the New North End. He does not go to any other parts of the city. Um, recently, where's Councillor McGee back there, threw out the idea of having a similar um, type of thing where people from the community can come to a spot in our community to give their feedback give their concerns. Um, Councilor Barlow has just started something similar, and I would be very interested in doing something similar, giving different levels of opportunity for people to give um, their opinions, not just email, but to actually talk to people. Uh, I was thinking part of my campaign, I might throw myself on it and do an AMA or roast me, maybe a combination of both. But um, we'll see how that goes. But there definitely has to be different ways. Because the representation that we have right now, especially on one side, is just not listening. I like to say they're living in a multiverse somewhere, um, a, a different Burlington, where they just refuse to see the reality of some of our situations. So definitely different levels of engagement are needed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, along the same lines, Proposition Zero, I think, uh, would really go a long way uh, for this. I do think that we should have a shadow uh, coffee house, uh, either for individual counselors or for the progressives as a block. Uh, I would also, weather permitting, uh, have my own uh, backyard uh, counselor hours uh, there on South Union Street. And then lastly, um, kind of touched upon a little bit by some of the other candidates, just the idea of digital democracy. I mean, so many of us are connected uh, to devices today. Uh, we should have some kind of digital progressive platform by which everyone, all our neighbors can pretty much constantly share their opinions with us. 
um, you know, we have the technology, we should use it. You know, other countries uh, are using this uh, for, for all kinds of e-government at this point. So I think that we should uh, explore options of how we can think outside the box to use uh, digital democracy to get uh, more input from more of our neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. One last round of applause for all the candidates. And so a couple of announcements. Um, first is just to say my priority, my selfish priority is to get at least three of these. Wow, would I take four if we could, um, but at least three of these candidates elected. Um, so that requires a lot of work on their part. It also requires a lot of work on our part. So don't leave here without committing to helping these folks get elected, um, whatever the outcome. There's also other folks who are running and collecting signatures. So as you leave, um, and maybe they can put their ballots and themselves kind of on that back table. So don't leave without helping get folks on the ballot with the signatures that they need. Um, not everybody got to ask their questions. So we're gonna take about eight minutes. Eight minutes, um, you can come up, you can ask the candidates more questions individually. Um, but you are going to fill out your ballots and vote. This is not the end. We have another segment after this to elect school board, to elect um, inspector of elections, things like that. That'll be much quicker. We'll hopefully do it as a slate. But for now, we're gonna take a pause for eight minutes. If you are, one second, and then we'll go to Barb. Central District is gonna turn in their ballots over here. North District is gonna turn in their ballots over here. East District is gonna turn in their ballots back there. And South District is gonna be in in the back. Barb, did you have an announcement? Donate. All of these candidates just committed to running without taking corporate funds, even if they don't know that that's what they just did. So make sure that you donate, because we are not corporations. Is the ballot rank choice? Carter, I don't know the answer to this question. Yes, it is rank choice. If you have already voted, go back and rank your choices. <laughs> or just vote, because it's, it's two people.
Test. One minute warning. This is your one minute warning. Okay, everyone, if you can find your spots again, whether that's sitting, whether that's standing, cease your mingling. <laughs> Deb's doing a good job. <laughs> find your seats, find your spots. We can all and have a beer after. <laughs> find your seats, find your spots. Huh? Find your seats, find your spots. <laughs> Okay, everyone, we are at the final part of our agenda, which is to elect all the other very important offices, which include school commissioner, ward clerk, inspector of elections. Folks can come back and give me 15 more minutes. I'll try to do it in 10. Okay, I am taking nominations for school commissioner for all of the districts. Districts. We've got East, Central, South, or North. Are there any nominations for school commissioner? Any nominations for school commissioner? Yeah, I knew we had one. Earhart. Gary Gold, is that right? Gary Gold for East District. Golden, Gary Golden for East District. Gary, are you here? Did Gary leave? I don't see Carol. Okay, his petition is here. So we have Gary Golden, Carter is writing it down. Do we have any nominations for ward clerk, all wards? And if you not thought about it, think about it. Do you wanna be a ward clerk? Run for ward clerk. I want to nominate Ward 3, Ward... I don't know if Barb's doing it. I want to nominate Wendy Coe for Ward 3, Ward Clerk. Ward 2, Ward 2, Ward Clerk. Great. For Ward Clerk, for Ward 2, we have Wendy Coe. Are there any other nominations for Ward Clerk? Barb. I nominate Charlie Giannone for clerk for Ward 3. He's been the clerk for the last several years, and he's wonderful! Charlie, would you go ahead and like to say something, Charlie? 
No, no, I'm all set. Okay, great. We've got Charlie for Ward 3. Any other nominations for Ward Clerk? Would you like to nominate yourself for Ward Clerk? Yeah. <laughs> Any other nominations for Ward Clerk? Inspector of Elections, three-year terms, open for all wards. Any nominations for Inspector of Election? So I'd like to nominate Barbara Alsup. She's been on our team now for three years, right? And she does a great job, and everybody likes her, so I hope that everyone will vote for <laughs> Barbara Alsup as a progressive for Inspector of Elections. Great. Inspector of Elections, Barbie Alsup in Ward, ward 3. For the three-year term, are there any other nominations for Inspector of Elections three-year term? Going once, going twice, think about it, it could be you. Inspector of Elections two-year term for Ward 8, are there any nominations for Inspector of Elections two-year term, Ward 8? Are there any nominations for Inspector of Elections one-year term, Wards 5 and 7? Any nominations for Inspector of Elections, one-year term, wards five and seven. Great, Carter, if you all don't mind, we will vote on these folks as a slate. So we will now take a voice vote after Carter reads us the slate. Okay, so we have ward clerk in ward two, Wendy Coe, ward three, Charlie Giannone, inspector three-year term, Barbie Oslop, and School Commission East District Gary Golden. We're just gonna do a big voice vote. So if you support this slate, you yell out I. If you, well, we'll do that and then we'll ask for any nays. <laughs> so, do we need to move in a second or is it just? I move that we vote on that slate. Second. Um, if you support this slate of candidates, please say I. If you do not support this slate, Barb. <laughs> okay, if you do not support this slate, say nay. Great, Barb. So can we just, for the people who are watching online, explain how they will get to vote so that they can see it now. Yeah. I'm, some people are actually watching online right now. I've, I've gotten a bunch of texts. It's great. Um, so after this caucus concludes, we're going to send out a virtual ballot using OpaVote, which is a secure online voting software we've used throughout COVID. So folks should check the email that they registered with. Also, I sent out an email to folks, and I'm going to follow up tomorrow with phone calls and texts. If there was a problem with your registration, you received an email from me um, with some information on how to fix it and what you need to do in order for me to send you a ballot. And as long as you do that before the deadline, which is Thursday at 7 p.m., you can still vote, and I'll send you a ballot. So you'll receive that in your email. You fill it out. You'll get confirmation, and then you're done. The deadline for voting is for virtual, for online voting is Thursday, 7 p.m. And for the event registration page that everybody used to register, we're gonna be updating tonight with just a list of the candidates who are nominated or up for a vote. And then all the campaigns are gonna to get together right after that deadline. We're gonna count the in-paper or the in-person paper ballots into the, add them to the virtual ballots, and then we'll announce results and a member from each campaign is invited to that process. And for those of you that didn't catch that, that means you will not get the results until after 7 p.m. on Thursday. So that is when all the tallying will happen from the online things, the in-person things, and for city council, we just did a slate for all of the other positions. So if you have not voted with your in-person ballots, make sure that you submit those now. This is the last call for in-person ballots. You cannot vote in person and online. So if you were here, please turn in your ballot so that your voice counts. And that is all. Thank you so much from Carter and I and the whole rest of the Progressive Steering Committee. And we would love help with cleanup.
Thank you, Barb. Yeah, if folks want to fold chairs and put...